Well, hello again, everyone. This is Mr. Reeves back with you, and I wanted to make a quick video just introducing you to uh, polygons and types of polygons uh, before we talk about finding the area of polygons. So a polygon is a closed figure made up of segments, and those segments come together at a vertex and when you have more than one vertex, vertex, they're called vertices. So on the screen you can see different types of polygons. Polygons are classified by the number of sides. So on the top left you see a triangle because it has three sides. It's called a triangle. Also has three angles, by the way, uh, which is actually why it's called a triangle. Uh, quadrilateral uh, has four sides, pentagon five, hexagon six, and so on. So we name, um, we name polygons by the number of sides. These polygons all happen to have um, equal uh, side lengths and equal angles, so they're called regular polygons, but polygons certainly do not have to be regular. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the first two, triangles and quadrilaterals, and um, but I just wanted you to be aware of all the different types of polygons that there are. So if we take a look now, I've got triangles on the screen. Um, we classify triangles two different ways. We classify triangles based on the number of sides, and we classify triangles based on the angles. So again, I referred to triangles uh, because there's three angles, but tri stands for three. We could e easily call a triangle a tri-side or something like that. So if you look at the top, uh, these are triangles uh, that are classified based on the number of sides. So a scaling triangle is where none of the sides are the same. Isosceles is where two, at least two actually is the official definition, uh, two of the sides. But usually uh, it's when two sides are the same we call it isosceles because when three sides are the same, uh, it's equilateral. So again, technically an equilateral triangle is also isosceles, but um, the basic definition, none of the same scaling, two are the same isosceles, and all three are the same equilateral. Now when you look at triangles based on angles, uh, an uh, angle that is less than 90 is acute. So when you have a triangle where all the angles are less than 90, it's acute. Uh, a right angle measures exactly 90 degrees, and if you have a triangle with one right angle, uh, because that's all it can have, uh, it would be a right triangle. By the way, those other two angles would be acute. So a right triangle has one right and two acute. Uh, an obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180. Um, so an obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle, and again, the other are acute. So when we talk about triangles based Based on angles, uh, if all the angles are acute, we say it's an acute triangle. If uh, two of them are acute but one is right, that's a right triangle. And if two of them are acute but one is obtuse, we call that an obtuse triangle. By the way, the formulas for finding the area of any triangle is always the same, and we're going to talk about that in the next video. All right, and finally, uh, quadrilaterals. So again, a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Uh, do you see uh, down in the bottom in the middle, uh, there's a square. That's our regular quadrilateral. That's a quadrilateral where all the sides are the same length and all the angles are the same. By the way, those would be 90-degree angles. Uh, up to the right, we have a rectangle. For a rectangle, we still have all 90-degree angles, um, but... Uh, the opposite pairs of sides are the same now. So uh, a square, again, officially is a rectangle. It's a, it's a special type of rectangle. So a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four 90-degree angles. Uh, if we hop up to the middle, a little bit to the left, we have a parallelogram. Uh, a parallelogram has those four sides, but you'll notice now uh, we don't have 90-degree angles anymore. So it's kind of like a rectangle that got slanted. Um, the opposite angles, or the angles that are diagonal across from each other, are equal. But you'll see in a regular parallelogram, um, you are not required to have 90 degree angles. Again, although a rectangle is officially a parallelogram still. 
All right, what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram versus a trapezoid, which we're going to talk about next, is in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. Now, if you look at the trapezoids, you will see for these ones, the way they're drawn, the, the red trapezoid and the, uh, the uh, magenta isosceles trapezoid, the top and the bottom sides are parallel to each other, but the left and the right sides are not. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. It has four sides where uh, one pair of opposite sides is parallel and the other is not. Uh, if we skip down uh, to the left in the middle, we have a kite. Um, and in a kite, none of the sides are parallel. Um, but the, if you notice those top two sides that are next to each other, adjacent to each other, they are congruent and the bottom two are congruent. Uh, a rhombus, I probably should have done a rhombus over with the parallelograms. Uh, a rhombus is to a parallelogram like a square is to a rectangle. So a rhombus is a special type of parallelogram where all four sides are the same. So a, a rhombus is kind of the cousin of both a rectangle, I'm sorry, the cousin of both a parallelogram and a square. It is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent, so in that way it, it's like uh, cousin to the parallelogram. Uh, it's a cousin to the square in that all the sides are the same. And that top left quadrilateral is just an example of one that doesn't fit into any special category. It simply has four sides. It's a four-sided polygon, and that is the requirement for a quadrilateral. All right, so this was just a quick introduction to polygons and then a little closer look at quadrilaterals and at triangles. And uh, in our next video, we're going to be looking at how to find the area of some quadrilaterals and triangles. Thanks for watching, everybody.